Welcome back. My name is Dave and this is Fuzzy Tutorials. So today we're going to talk about security and viruses and malware and that kind of stuff. We're also going to talk about VPN or virtual private networking. So let's get started. The first thing I want to talk about is should you use a VPN? And the general answer to that is most times no. Now there is a specific use case scenario where VPNs are a good idea. Uh, for instance, if you want to watch a uh, streaming service uh, that you need to access from another country, so if you wanted to watch, say, the US version of Netflix, or if you wanted to access something that's not available in your country that you could only access from a different country, a VPN service is going to be the way to go for that. Uh, other than that, uh, most of the uses that originally started people using VPNs just aren't really valid anymore. Now, there's been a number of things that have happened in the past few years with VPN services. Uh, namely, some of them have got caught actually keeping logs when they say that they don't. So I've just uh, brought up a couple articles here that I can quickly show you. And all I did was I did a, uh, a search on Google about VPN security and no log claims. Now I'm not going to go through all of the stuff in this article. You could do that yourself. I'm going to leave links in the description below so that you can look these up yourselves. And I'm just going to quickly scroll through a little bit of this so you can see what they're talking about. So basically what this article is saying here is that you really have no way of knowing whether they're actually keeping logs or not, no matter how much they claim they aren't. Now in the past I've run my own web servers and I've run some pretty big ones and uh, there are ways to hide files from casual searching and there's even ways to hide them from people that know a little bit more about what they're doing. So to say that they have outside auditors come in and check doesn't really hold a lot of water in my view. Even if they're not uh, recording what it is you're actually doing on those sites, uh, there's still going to be separate log files that are logging what websites you went to and how long you were there. And some of these VPN services in the past have been caught selling that information to advertising companies. Unless you have a specific need to access services in another country, I just wouldn't bother. And I'll get into why you don't really need the encryption services that they offer anymore uh, a little bit later on in this video. So here's another article that you can look at. Um, you, I've scrolled it down to the relevant part, so you can just pause this and read it uh, if you so desire. Uh, once again, there will be a link to this article in the description. And here's another one that you can pause and look at. It'll also be linked. There are other alternatives to using a VPN to ensure encryption, but first let's talk about your standard websites. If we take a look at this website address, you'll see that it starts with HTTPS. And what that stands for is uh, Hypertext Transfer Protocol Secure. Now it used to be just HTTP was the norm many years ago. But as more and more security concerns cropped up, uh, pretty much any website that's reputable out there 
is going to be using HTTPS. So that means at a minimum 128-bit uh, SSL encryption and some of them even use 256-bit. Uh, and what that means is that your entire communication with that website from end to end, from your browser to their server, is encrypted. So nobody can get in there and listen in unless they have actually compromised the server that you're on. Or, sorry, if they've compromised the web server you're accessing, or they've compromised your system, then they're going to be able to look at everything you're doing regardless. With that in mind, uh, when you're visiting websites, if they're not using the full HTTPS, then I would stay away from them. Now there's also another service that you can use that is free, and they are located all over the world. It's something that you can set up uh, on your actual uh, router for your internet in the house. Uh, you can also set it up on on your computer individually or your individual devices but if you set it up at your router level then they're all going to be using that to access the internet. And I'm going to uh, show you a little bit about how to set this up but first let's talk a little bit about the different levels that they offer. So they're the company is called Cloudflare and they've actually been around in different forms uh, just about since the beginning of the internet which is why they've got thousands of servers located all around the world. Now they also provide another level of encryption end-to-end -end. and if you use this service you're going to be bypassing your own uh, internet service provider or ISP. And that way, your own service provider can't uh, log anything of other than the fact that you're using that service. But they won't have a, a trail, an audit trail of websites that you've been visiting. So they've got uh, three levels of encryption service. They've got the uh, basic service, which all it's doing is just encrypting your data. And incidentally, uh, just by switching to these guys, 90% of the time, your internet experience is going to be faster than your own ISP. Now, that doesn't mean that you're going to have faster downloads or faster uploads. That's kind of a, a common misconception that people think just because the internet connection seems faster that everything's faster. But what it does do is it reduces the latency. Uh, so what that means is from the time that you click on a website link to when it actually starts showing up on your computer, uh, there's going to be a delay. And that delay is called latency. So uh, this particular service, their latency is much lower than most of the ISPs out there. So overall your general internet surfing experience is going to be quite a bit faster. Now I've used these guys off and on for probably six or seven months now and I absolutely love the service. Now uh, your primary DNS number for, uh, for this level is 1.1.1.1 and your secondary is 1.0.0.1 and I'll show you where to put this information in when the time comes and then their next level of service they block all known websites where malware has been found and they keep this uh, list updated on a regular basis I couldn't tell you how often they update it but I believe it is at least once a week uh, probably more often, but I don't know for sure. The addressing on this is 1.1.1.2 and 1.0.0.2. And the third level they've got will block malware sites as well as porn sites. So if you've got uh, kids in the house and you want to make absolutely sure they can't get to that stuff, 
then this is a, a really good level to use. And this will prevent, uh, prevent both the, the known malware and known porn sites from being accessed through your router. Now that's not to say that you could never get malware or see porn because there can be sites that just aren't known about at the time that they've updated their file the last time. So you always need to be careful. So it's pretty easy to make the change. Now I'm going to be showing you using my router, um, but most routers you'll be able to uh, look around in the advanced setup and find what you're looking for. So let me just uh, go back out to the main login screen here. So uh, typically when you're looking for the router, if you don't know how to access it already, uh, you'll usually find it uh, if you go into your browser and type in this number right here. So 192.168.1.254. That's usually where you're going to find it. And then you would just log in. Usually your username is going to be admin. And then we're going to go into the advanced setup. Okay, and then what you're looking for is your WAN IP addressing or your external LAN IP settings. And so we're going to go down here to where it says select your DNS type. And you're going to switch it from dynamic to static. And your numbers are probably going to look something like this. They're not going to be the same, obviously. But if you would tell us, you might recognize some of these. So then we're just going to change that primary one to 1.1.1.3. That's what I like to use myself. And then 1.0.0.3. And then you just click on apply. And you wait. And it'll kick you back. When it's done updating your router and making the changes, it'll bring you back to that screen. And there we are. And now we can just verify that our internet's still working, we can go back to one of our pages here and just hit reload. And there we go. So we've confirmed that we're working on that. And it's that easy. So if you don't want to use the same level of protection that I use, then you just put in the appropriate number from, from this list. All right, now the next thing we're going to talk about is uh, virus protection. Now I don't use any of the ones that I'm about to show you because the ones I'm showing you are ones that are available for free. Had I taken the time to actually go through these myself back about I guess a year ago um, I probably wouldn't have got the paid version but I kind of got used to using a paid version, so I just kind of automatically uh, got one when my old one expired. Um, this was something that I did when I got this newer computer. Now, if you're interested in the one that I'm using, uh, I use one that's called Total Antivirus. And before I get into showing you all these, um, First, I want to talk a bit about when and how you should use them. Now, if you've got a higher end system with lots of memory, and lots of speed, then you could leave it running in the background all the time, like they would normally do on their default setup. However, 
Um, I found that you know over time of using them, most systems, if you leave it running in the background, it's going to slow you down significantly because it's watching everything that you do online. So anytime you go to a website, it's checking every file that you might download. And, you know, in theory, that's a good thing. But if you're being careful about the type of sites you're going to, and you're using a service like the one that I just showed you, uh, it's probably not something you got to worry about too much. And you just need to be careful about sites that you're downloading stuff from. You know, make sure you check them out a little bit before downloading something. And if you find you have to download something where you feel the site might be a little questionable, then you can turn it on temporarily to monitor your installation. Or you can just install it and then scan it after the fact. Uh, although it's probably better if, if you have any question in your mind about the site, it's probably better if you go ahead and, and turn it on before you make the download. And then it can scan the download as you're downloading it. Me, personally, the way I use a virus scanning uh, package is I I don't leave it running all the time. I just I do a very thorough system full system scan every week or so. It doesn't take long. Uh, I've probably got about oh two thirds of a terabyte of data on my drive for it to scan. So it'll usually do that scan in 30 to 40 minutes and this is a little bit older of a system you know I I got it this year but it's actually a refurbished uh, 2016 model of MacBook so uh, if it can run it at that speed your system is probably gonna run it faster because you have probably got something newer than I do uh, and then when it's done running I I turn it back off. So if you just remember to you know, do a full scan on your system once a week and you follow the steps that I showed you to be careful, then you should be good. So now where, we, where we're at here is uh, PC Magazine. But you can just do, if you're looking to do this search on your own, you can just do a Google search or uh, whatever search engine you prefer and just do a search for um, best free antivirus programs or if you're wanting to pay for one then you can just leave out the free part so we'll just take a look at these here real quick and I'm gonna comment on some of these uh, a lot of these I have used in the past and most of them are quite good. Um, you know, sometimes uh, one company will be a little ahead of another company on having the, the latest and greatest virus definitions and, and malware protection. So you know, sometimes one will be better than another. So if, it, if you feel like you're having problems and that really are bothering you and you think you might have a virus or malware or something and your program isn't finding anything then just uh, install one of these other free ones and see how they work you know back in the day we used to have you know the top two or three installed on a system at any given time but nowadays the their virus definitions are a lot closer to each other than they used to be Now, Kaspersky, I've used that one, and they're generally quite good. Um, now, Avast, I've also used them in the past, and they used to be actually really good. However, they were bought out uh, about a year, maybe a year and a half ago by another company, and then now they are really bad for installing a bunch of bloatware on your system that slows your system down so much it's almost like having malware and they're really bad about constantly pestering you to buy their pro version and 
uh, most people are finding that they are just really, really annoying. And they were even caught uh, shortly after they were bought out. Uh, they were even caught uh, pulling information off of their user system and selling it to advertisers. So now when they were caught doing that, they, they stopped doing it, or so they said. And they haven't been caught doing that particular thing again. But uh, I personally would not trust them. Now, AVG, I've used this one in the past, and they've always been pretty good. Same thing with Bitdefender. And Sophos, I've used Sophos. And they're generally pretty good. Uh, although a couple of versions of their software were a little bit buggy. And I actually was using a paid version. And when they made a, a major update, it kind of broke my system. So I stopped using it. So, but this was probably four or five years ago. So they've probably fixed all that stuff up. Now I've never heard of this one, so I can't speak to that. Now the Microsoft Windows Defender, uh, I've heard uh, some from some of the reviews that I've looked at that is generally pretty good. So at the very least, if you're on a Windows system, you should have this turned on. And Zone Alarm, I've used their products in the past. Um, I used to use a, a product uh, called Zone Labs by the same company. And we also used to use a program called Black Ice that was by the same company. And that's used to protect your system. So one of the big tools that hackers will try and use to break into a system, uh, whether it be a, uh, a central router or your actual individual computer system, is they'll do port scanning. So they'll basically, they'll go to IP addresses on the internet that they can get a response from and then one by one they'll go through all the possible ports and look for a response and then if they get a response, they'll try and attack it. So any good firewall software out there, uh, you want to have it set to stealth mode so that it won't respond to those types of queries. Now, I haven't looked at any of their stuff in probably 20 years, so I couldn't tell you if it's still good. But back in the day, it was one of the best. These are basically the Windows ones, and a lot of these are available for Mac as well. So this is the ones for Mac. And we'll just scroll down a little bit there. And just like it says here, yes, even Macs need antivirus protection. It's not as, it's not as common uh, when it comes to adware and virus attacks and that kind of thing. It's not as common to see on Macs, but it is becoming more and more common as Macs take over more and more market share. So I would definitely recommend you use something on your Mac as well. And once again, uh, some of these I've used, uh, some of them I haven't. Uh, a lot of the ones I was showing you on the previous page are ones that I've used in Windows and uh, some of these I've used on the Mac. I've used uh, Bitdefender on the Mac and it was very good. Um, now at the time I used it they didn't have a free version so it's nice to see that they have a free version available. and. Uh, I've used also Casper C uh, on the Mac back when I first got a Mac in 2011. And now I have used Norton products before on Windows machines. And although at one time they used to be good, I wouldn't recommend any Norton product anymore. Um, one of the biggest problems with Norton is that 
they're darn near impossible to get back off your system once you've put them on without wiping your system and reinstalling everything over. And they are really bad for uh, slowing your system down. So I would definitely stay away from Norton products. And of course, I've used McAfee on Windows machines. Um, I stopped using McAfee quite a number of years ago because they just stopped having enough updates on their on their virus definitions so I don't know what they're like today I can't speak to that but they are looking to be fairly well recommended here so they might be worth giving a try now one thing you may want to do if your computer is one that you're always having to download and uh, stuff from possibly questionable sites or you've got a lot of kids that are doing a lot of downloads uh, you might want to take research a little further and uh, do a, a Google or Bing search uh, and check out several sites that do recommendations I just picked one that that uh, was laid out in in a way that was good for doing this tutorial but there are plenty of other sites out there that actually do a much more thorough job and what I would recommend you do is look at several different sites and then look at the ones that they all kind of recommend as being the top ones because different sites are going to have different recommendations so if you pick the one or two common ones that they all seem to really like you're probably gonna have a good bet there okay so now I'm going to fire up the uh, virus program that I use just so you can take a look and I can show you a couple things that you should be looking for and there we go total antivirus now the one thing I don't like about these guys is that you don't just get like a one a one subscription where you get everything they've got several different levels and if you want to get all the protection that they offer it can cost you quite a bit so when this runs out I actually will be uninstalling it and going with a free one however this is what I'm using now so I just wanted to show you kind of the main area that you need to look at so you've got two different levels of scan you've got a quick scan and a system scan now I would recommend if you're going to use this the way I'm suggesting then you want to use your system scan once a week uh, because this will look at every single file on your system and we're not going to run it right now because I've actually run it pretty recently and this is not really suitable for the tutorial. I want to go back up to quick scan. So all you would do is you know, every program is going to run it a little different. The interface is going to look different, but basically you just start your scan and it's going to go through and it's going to tell you whether there's any issues found or not. Now when you're doing a quick scan, it's just looking at your main uh, programs that you use the most. And that's why it doesn't take long. And then if there are issues, it'll usually provide you with a, an interface that you can go in and take a look at them and quarantine them or delete them. So that's pretty simple. I'm not going to really take you through any of the other stuff. This video is getting a, a little long already. If you enjoy what we're doing, please make sure to hit that like button and subscribe and hit that notification bell so you don't miss the videos outcome, upcoming. So thanks for hanging out with me today. Hope to see you back soon. Bye for now.